got cut off because um, I'm back to filming in the shadows uh, and they're sort of tucked away in a corner here and um, I'm using a which I hadn't really done before is the the, the, the flash but it's you know, just a constant light here but of course it uses a lot on the camera that is on the camera phone but that obviously uses up a lot of power so it's um, exhausted my battery much quicker than I was expecting. But anyway, back to the game's turn. So um, we're in the political phase, second phase, and I just, what you missed is I just rolled for air values. So we have a, um, this is an omnibus markers track. Uh, and um, so you get, so we're recording a political support level um, equipment points and air power and that works for everyone it's basically 2d6 and you roll each turn except in winter and um, that is the amount of combat factors which using an air power chit of which um, each side has some stacked up here adds in combat which is an interesting way to do it so it's the notice that you know the vagaries of air power According to weather and other uh, conditions at this period, were quite um, vast. So it's a very nice way. It sort of it is balanced because it works for both sides, but also it means to say if someone's got loads of air chips, they're not always going to have a massive um, uh, result. Sometimes they will. It's uh, it's, a, it's another nice variable in the game. Um, and I rolled a two, so the lowest it could get. There's been sort of seven, eight, maybe nine, like this, and even twelve once, and this is a two. We're also um recording on that track, um French morale. It starts at fifty, and every every time they take a combat factor hit, that goes down. When it reaches zero, they withdraw, and the Turks have managed to bring them down to sixteen. So uh, that's main Turk objective at the moment is to bash on the um French and send them packing. Um, because that will earn us uh, three um, resource cities and a sudden death um, city, of which there are four. We've already got one. The Turks want this one, that one, and then they just have to get this one, which is heavily in Greek control for sudden death victory. Maybe it's a bit late in the game for that. We're halfway through the game on turn 10. So I turn eight out of fifteen. Um. Anyway, so, uh, there was that, and then also, um, because uh, Constantinople is still, uh, under British control, you've got both the Greek Ecumenical Patriarch and the Caliph, religious leaders in Constantinople, each providing one point of political support for each side. Okay, so there was that. That's the end of the political phase. Now we go to the first player phase, and it's the Greek player phase always first. Um, it's the first step is battle group step. So what you're doing this is um, within regions. Uh, let's go to the Greeks. So for example, um, this region there's just one step. What you can do, um, generally you have battle groups uh, in cities. And then you might also have them um, outside the city. And you can have as many battle groups as you like in a region. Obviously, a battle group is going to be two or more units, uh, generally four at the moment because of um, some disastrous political random event. Um, the Greeks are down to only three per stack. So you can see how the random events balanced out. There's a disastrous one for the Turks. Um, up there earlier and then the, the Greeks have this one it's not so disastrous but it's sort of a broader more chronic effect and they and only have smaller stacks but anyway so for example here we've got in Adin um, the Greeks have got uh, a stack here actually in the city with um, five uh, two core and one um, division and then each of those can have a, an artillery asset, of which they each have one, and I've entrenched them as well. Now, the artillery assets and entrenchments cost equipment points. Um, then also, in the same region, there's another battle group. This battle group is just named for a stack, um, which has two divisions and two artillery. So I could split these down. I couldn't combine them because one's at the maximum. 
Um, the advantage of having more than one battle group is that if there's if you attack a city, um, and then there's another battle group in the region, you have to also attack the other battle group before you get an attack on the city. You don't have to destroy it; you just have to be attacking it. So you know, you have to send in diversionary forces to hold off them while you go for the city. That this is mimicking that kind of thing. Um, so it would be great to have split that battle group into two. So then if the Turks wanted to take the control, they'd have to have the city and they'd have to send in three forces, three battle groups to attack all those battle groups there, obviously diluting the forces. So that's a consideration. But then the other consideration, obviously, is if you have a, a weak battle group, it's going to get wiped out easily. Obviously, it could still, um, it would still uh, soak off some attackers in that region. So... This is that step where you decide to do that, which is before movement. Um, and I often don't make much decision this way because for me the game's kind of complicated enough. But I think if I was playing two player, this would have a lot of. Um, could be a, a very sort of tactical moment for each player. I think. Um, so I'm just making sure, yeah, so here we don't have a Sokov group, but I'm not going to separate them, I'm going to bring in one. So I'm not adjusting my battle groups. Um, so there we go to strategic movement. This is does not occur in winter. Now the Greek can do 1d6 minus 2, so that's zero uh, naval transport, which essentially is uh, when they want to move their units from here we'll say here, onto the mainland, or vice versa. There is a land bridge across the Dardanelles there. Um, or, is, or is the Dardanelles only um, at Constantinople? But anyway, that narrow strip of sea there. Um, I mean, there's not a land bridge, but it's considered like a land bridge. Um, so the Greeks can't do that. Then there's also a um, rail movement. You see between regions, there's these little railway symbols. And that's the same thing, 1d6 minus 2. So they can move one uh, unit, that's a higher unit, divisional core by railway. Um, an unlimited thing. So, okay, we can get wherever we want to go. It's more useful generally for the Turks who have generally further to travel. Because um, the Greeks tend to be confined here. And then they've got their sort of, not allies as such, but also fighting the Turks or hampering the Turks, the French and Armenians there on the other side. Um, so I won't be using that as the Greeks either. Then we go to movement step. This does not happen in winter, nor does it happen in autumn. And uh, just to show you that that's the turn track. And we start here, we go this way, and that's winter. These are autumn, winter, autumn, winter. And then that's not considered autumn, the last turn of the game. Um, these are like, for example, one month, and this is two months, three months, so it's a variable months per turn, depending on whatever. Um, so now movement, you can move two regions um, unless you enter an enemy region with enemy units, in which case you stop. So I was going to move one of these up to and the region there. Um, I'm going to move an artillery unit onto there. Um, then these ones are going to one, two. So you could go one, two there. Sorry, you can't see these are off, but any uh, up here. So these can go one, two. Oh, I should have moved one of those by rail, because you can also move. And by land after one, two, and two, those there. Uh, so where do we want these? This is the question. Now, the thing about the Greeks is they only have to hold on to the end. And if they, their um, political support has not reached zero, they win. So hence they, in fact, in my game, the um, Turks entrenched first and then... The um, a few turns later, the Greeks entrenched. No, entrenchments it isn't. It doesn't stop people moving through because, for example, um, 
the Greeks could move into an entrenched region, they would have to stop. Their next game turn, they could move out and continue into the uh, Turkish interior and cause mayhem that way. So you can bypass entrenchments in time, but you couldn't take control of that area. So, you know, it could hamper you for... Um, until you gain control of another area and city, uh, hamper you in terms of supply. Um, but you can see it's doubly valued because of what I said just now for the Greeks, in that you control the region if you control the city, or at least you can test it, and they'd still be on the board. Um, so that, that, and that's, if you're entrenched in cities, it's doubly defensive. So these entrenchments are very useful then. In fact, that's, that's a good point. I should probably let leave some units up here and just send them far away and have them as a presence on the board well, okay i think yeah so um the greeks are up here and these are rough regions these are mountainous regions the green are clear and um the greeks get penalties for fighting in the rough and the mountains the turks generally get penalty for fighting in the mountains and uh, in the desert there, um, again, the Greeks get penalties on attacking and defending in, in the desert, but the Turks not at all. So um, we've got that terrain to think about. Um, I don't know, basically the Turks are entrenching, so I'm going to move one, two. So we're just distributing our artillery assets, then two of them there into this stack just to create this defensive line and that because of what I also said earlier perhaps it should be a bit of a line in depth so I should be looking to hold that and uh, entrenching those troops definitely need to hold Smyrna so that's okay that will be our rear defensive line which will become strengthened in time so the Greeks aren't attacking and um, let's see about the French, who is also the Greek player's control, and the Armenians. The Armenians are orange, French are blue. Um, so the French, they can only operate within the regions with their flags. So they're not interested in going so far under here, which is kind of like, you know, Italian zone of influence. Um, they just want these areas, but the... Um, there's one area which the French want, which is controlled at the moment by the um, Turks. So they're going to, that's, that was their objective. So they're going to send in, now in the battle groups phase, I should have done this, is because they're not restricted by the Greeks, three unit per stack. So they're the normal four unit per stack. They're going in to harass and destroy I'll leave those, move those into the city, just in case. And keep the Armenians there as a defensive bulwark. And, oh dear, we've left that. No, so we can't... The French, French are on the defensive. They can't... They don't really actually have the force. They're going to have to protect Adana. So instead I'll send that force there. And oh, okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, so I have to redo all that. Um, they were there. Yeah, so I have been thinking the French would be going on the offensive to take this back, but looking at the situation, they need to defend Adana. If Alexandretta goes, that's a disaster for them. So they have to defend both the approaches. Okay, and the Ottomans will have to look after Caesarea. Okay, I mean the Ottoman, I mean the Armenians. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, the, the Italians and the Green down there are moved by the Turkish player. If they move at all, they only actually move on random event. Um, okay, so that's the Greek movement step completed as the state of play after have I got everything in? Yes. 
Um, now we go to the combat step. Unfortunately, I don't have any combat to show you. No, yes, I do. These are, um, they I suppose they could have moved out, but these are uh, anti cumulist factions within the um, Turkish forces, a uh, sort of ancient Ottoman sort of holder on us. Uh, so they're contesting this region, and they could, they're not really going to want to fight that heavy group, but they could fight these. So what we'll do, so we'll do that. Um, I can't zoom any more than that, but basically we have two fours divisions against another four, and that four's in the clear, so it would be doubled in a city, etc. So we have no modifiers, so it's basically... Um, ah, yes, and this is good because it's a special combat system designed by Weston J. Ernie, especially mentioned purely for the combat system, which goes like this. So we've got eight points versus four points. Then what you do is you roll as many dice as you like, if you roll equal to or below your number of points, that's the damage you cause to your opponent. If you roll over, um, then you don't do any damage. So, you know, you have your little push your luck thing there. So the sensible thing is for him to roll one and for them to roll two. But, you know, you in a squeaky situation, you might get ultra risky. I'm going to do that sensible thing. And we get... A five, that's one point over the four. So you can't, you see, with a one, say if you've got a one which is a regimental unit, you're most often not going to cause anything. And there, unfortunately, they didn't cause any losses against the enemy. And five, six, seven against seven, perfect. So seven, so that flips because it's worth four. I put the dot on the back because um, just to remind me, because, you know, if that one was flipped as well and the backs are normally just white, um, they come white with the game. I wouldn't remember which side is which. I mean, I could probably see because generally they're in stacks, but this is just helpful. So that's four to flip him. Then I have to satisfy three more. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another unit, so he's going to have to lose that other four to satisfy the five, six, seven. Yeah, the three more. Um, so he goes, but um, he goes into the dead pile which is over there, and uh, that will be a point against uh, um, the Turks and a point for the Greeks because it's a loss of a divisional core, and then he can be rebuilt on succeeding turns. But, um, or maybe even this turn, but then um, because we have the strategic, which is the building phase after this, before the Turkish turn. But anyway, um, so that is how combat goes, and then you, you, know, you get some mods. That's essentially it. So um, there's also now a counterattack step. Now this is interesting. So because the Turks have another battle group that was not attacked this turn in the same region, that battle group can now counterattack, um, which is risky. Uh, it could be risky, you know, because at the moment they're in a nice place. The interesting thing is that even though they're in a city, it doesn't say that if they're in a city, they have to move out of the city. To attack, so even even if say they attack, they would still effectively run back into the city. Um, afterwards, I uh, just checked, and uh, they have they can only ca attack units that attack. So you could, like this side, could have had another unit in the vi the vilayet. Vilayet, vilayet is the Turkish word, something like that, not region. So lurking in the vilayet, which couldn't have been attacked because it didn't expose itself. Um. So, I'm going to do that because we got a nice chance. One last thing I'd like to mention is that um, if I had assets, ah, oh, I forgot the air power. So, um, if you're going to um use um an artillery asset, you have to expend an equipment point because all those um shells are expensive. I don't think I have to spend one for air. Yes, no, you don't spend them for air, but air. On a 1d6 roll of 6, if you use it, it is lost. Uh, you can use um, as many air as you like in a fight. You can only use as many artillery as you have units. Um, so we do have air. That's just for the hell of it, because it's going to be the only one in this battle. Bring it in. Oh dear, so that's not going to be so good for the Turks. Not such a balanced fight after all.
I don't, sorry, you can only use it air at, um, points equal to the number of units. So yeah, we'll do that. So in this fight, the um, Turks are sending three air points and the Greeks are helping their sort of brothers in arms with two. Um, and so, okay, so what we have then is eight combat factors. And then the, if you remember, the air power is worth two this turn, that's all. So that adds four. So that's first 12. And we've got two divisions in a core there, which is eight and five is 13 plus um, six is 19. So that tells me I think 4d6 is a reasonable risk for the Turks. And what did you have, 12, 2d6. So you see, they could, at a pinch, they could go 3d6. Let's risk it for them, because otherwise I think they're going to get knocked out this combat. So the blues are the Turks um, in my rolls. So the Turks got 10, 16 hits. And then the anti chemists got 7 plus 4 is 11. 16 versus 11. So um, let's soak up these first. So they have to soak up 1, 2. Uh, that's going to be have, all, have to be all 3. Uh, I need to mark that. To see how I do it as I go along. Um, that will satisfy 11. I could have destroyed one, but you, you get a chance to bring, to recover if you only uh, disrupt them. And then 16 is going to be two eights, isn't it? So that's all of the anti chemists so They're gone. That's them out of the game because they have no region to be in anymore. And then we roll to see if the air survives. So these three here. Oh dear, one of them's knocked out. That's quite good because we were running out of assets. There's no more artillery. They're all on the board and uh, only a few air. Um, and then these two, they're okay. So they go into the used box. Okay, and that means that the Turks have two more air and the Greeks have, I think, five more air. To be used later this turn in the Turkish part. Okay, so that's fighting. So we've got um, three Turkish disrupted units there. Now that is perhaps risky, but you know we know that we're not going to get fought. That's the end of the Greek um, player phase. And now they have their recovery phase. They don't have anyone to re roll for recovery, and the Turks can't roll for these until the end of their player phase. So now we go to the next phase, which is the second random events phase. And I'm rolling a 63, which is, and we have a double-sided shoot here. We're on this side. Italy repudiates the Tony venice loss agreement. Italy recognizes Albanian claims against Greek territory. Move Italy's attitude martyr one box pro Turkish and add 1d6 PSP to Turkey. We've already actually had that once, but again, you know, it could be a similar political action occurring, um, or, or the ex same thing denounced again. So, and so I just adjust the PSPs, and Italy goes even further into intervention. They're solidly into the intervention on the Turkish side at this point. Now we go to the strategic phase, which is where you kind of get replenishments. So we have to calculate our equipment points. So we're not political support, but now we're counting equipment points. That depends on this. The um, Greeks get three from domestic. So that's five, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then every economic city, by the way, I marked these with the red. Um, it wasn't marked, and I marked the sudden death cities with a black myself because it otherwise it was disappeared on the map under the counters. So anyway, they get what did I say? Twelve for domestic, and then for every two um, economic cities they hold, that's those two, not the French, but the Greeks themselves. They get another one d six. That's twelve plus two is fourteen, and then also from foreign aid. 
So if somebody's intervening for you, you get another 2d6. That's 14 plus I just rolled a 10. So that's 24. And then for someone supporting, you get another 1d6. So 24 plus 5 is 29. That's a nice amount, isn't it? And the Greeks were on one equipment point. So that gets them up to 30, doesn't it? And it's like it's nice because at this stage of the game, you do get lots of equipment points because at the start of the game, you, you only have a side supporting each or two sides. Yeah, the USA used to be supporting um, um, uh, Greece, but only for one point in that in their case. But they've gone out um, on a, uh, an event. Um, so that's how the Greeks do it. Then the Turks is a bit different. They get a 1d6 per economic city. They get no normal domestic, but they also get the foreign aid. And they've got two intervening for them. So that would be 4d6 for the foreign aid. Not such a high roll. I rolled 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. And then 1, 2, 3... Three domestic cities. So one, two, three. So you see, that's why they want like this one. These will be tasty. And they had to retreat out of that one. Um, with a nifty little rule I mentioned in a minute. So they've got three. So what did I say? 12 plus 3d6. Oh, four. So that's 16. Not good. So they're on 18 and the Greeks are on 30 EP and it, it's often like that although the Turks have been beating the Greeks re EP recently but that's why the Greeks have got so many more air asset points. Um, now we get the build rebuilds upgrades of units including trenches. Um, and that works like just according to uh, sorry equipment point cost table so um these are tables come with the game you, you get those two i'm actually going to do a sort of overview video this is really turn thing um uh, and uh, but just in case you only watch this one and you get the nice little rule but um so on the equipment point table it tells us all we need to know for this and um we're sort of we're not maxed out in units but we're maxed out in, in core and almost maxed out in Divisions, which are the heavy units, We've got regiments apart from that, um, because there's been a lot of spending in, and a lot of entrenchment recently without fighting. But anyway, there is stuff to spend for the Greeks. They're going to spend nine on three divisions straight away. They will come in. They can come in Smyrna, Degagach, or Constantinople. Degagach here, or Constantinople, if they have it. Um, so I think that's going to be most useful for them here. Um, ah, but I didn't move fellows out of Smyrna. That was a mistake because we had to abide by stacking. So I can only bring one one there. So I have to remember that to move them out. So I can bring two more in there. So that was nine EP points. So I still got 21 to spend. Now they could... There's, Another division to rebuild on the dead pile, so they'll do that. That's all their space they can do for the rebuild, so that's another three. They're on 18, and so they'll save the rest for assets. Um, I could buy some trenches. No, we've run out of trench markers, and I believe that is an intentional limit, um, which is probably a good thing, you know, so it could get a bit... Crazy with trenches. Uh, so then we'll go over to the uh, Turkish units. Um, so they've still got quite a few. One, two, three, four, five. They want to buy some assets, I think. Not so much units, but I'll get a couple. They come on here at the top um, they can come in some other places like I think Constantinople and Samoon but that's under British control it's, they're going to take political hits to take Brit away from British control but they do want they were planning to do it at the point but anyway that's six points off 
and, I, and they'll leave it at there. So they're at 12. And the Greeks at 18. Um, and I could have upgraded units on the map, but I've upgraded as far as possible, I believe. Oh, for example, that one I could have upgraded for two points. In fact, I'll do that. Okay, and bring that one on there instead. Let's say, okay, um, and now we get first air asset points of um, uh, done, and um, I believe there was a slight change because this is based on Brian Train System, which they their price varies on a one d six, and on the equipment point cost charts it says one d six, um. But, in fact, in the rules, it says what you do, it's a bidding system. This is quite nifty as well. It goes like this. Um, for, you start with the Turks and they bid a number. So, for example, you start with um, air and then go to Arty. So the Turks will say one. And remember, we're arguing for four air points only uh, left. And then the, the Greeks, if they want them, they say two. And then the Turks might go three, but it, and if, if the other player passes, you have to buy at least one for the amount you bid. And then the, the other player can buy as many as they like, too, at that same price. Um, but, you, you know, you can kind of try and um, push your enemy to spend more EPs than perhaps they want. Um, or make them too costly for your enemy. So there's a nice little... Um, bidding mechanism there. So the Turks are going to say one, the Greeks say two, the Turks are happy going to three, the Greeks could go four and kind of maybe cost them out, which I think they're going to do just to be nasty. So the Greeks go four and the Turks say they could buy three for that. If they went to five, they could only buy two, but then if they don't go up to five, um, the uh, Greeks could buy them all, and that's none. So the Turks going up to five. Are the Greeks going to go to six? Yes, they are. So they say six, and they buy two. Okay, so that brings them down to 12 points. So they've got six left. Now, that is important because every time you use an artillery unit, as I said, it costs an EP. So if you don't have those EPs, you won't be able to use those. They need some in hand in case the Turks make attacks. So these are costing six. The Turks say drat. That would bring them down to naught. They'd not have any artillery on attack. So the question is, are they going to go for a quiet turn? And I th they, they think, yes, we need to get those air uh, drat it with our military machine is slowing our offensive down so be it and then you do the same for the artillery but we don't have any of those assets available left and the artillery the airs are just available in the air holding boxes the artillery ones come in as though they were new builds in those various places and have to be moved over so you also need a port and you know you could deny a port to your enemy and they wouldn't able be able to get those artillery assets on board so that's the strategic phase finished. Um, no, um, there will be reinforcements to come on. I haven't got any this turn. Um, and now we have the Turkish player phase. So that starts with this battle group step, reorganizing those battle groups. And battle groups, as they move, they can drop off, but they cannot pick up units. So we had this battle group here, which... I think I'm going to keep it whole as it is. Um, really, the Turks want an offensive here. So they're going to add that cavalry division to that battle group. So that's maximum. Um, this division goes into that battle group. And we're going to move another in as a covering force. Um, I 
Okay, that's all the battle group steps, strategic movement steps. So the Turks can't do naval transport, but they get this turn zero rail transportation. Um, it's not such a bad thing because it doesn't really happen in this area. There's no rail connections, but it happens around here. Um, and there's no rail connection straight from their supply um, incomings there. There is from here, but that goes into Nicomedia, which they don't control anymore. And they don't at the beginning any of the game either. Interesting stuff. So, no strategic movement, movement step. Okay, so I'm going to move that one into here. We're going to bring these down. Cavalries are great because they add an extra strike ability. One, two, and I'm going to bring the cavalry together here. Okay. Actually, I'll bring that with that cavalry unit. And instead, move that one there. Okay. I don't want to use cavalry on defence, really. They, essentially what they do, they allow you to re add an extra roll if you so wish. As also do, you have these commander chits. I forgot Turks could have added that in combat. They could have had Kamal fighting here and they'd have got an extra roll. With the attendant risk of going over your point, your combat factor level. Um, They didn't need it as it happened anyway. Um, They might need it. Now, so we want to knock out the French. The question is, how can we do it without too many losses? Because they're strongest here, so really we want to come in here. So one, two is the suggestion. Unfortunately, our cavalry are there. Maybe I should move those cavalry over. It's too late now. So, ah, yeah, and in the battle group step, I should have combined them. Oh no, we do need to defend that region, do we? Not so much, as long as we hold that region. Risk a counter strike. Hmm. That's a good point. That's maybe why we were coming in here. Okay. Where they are the biggest, potentially we can cause the biggest losses. So we're going in there. We're going in. In effect, we don't mind sacrificing yeah. some troops as long as we take out um, many of the French with us. So, and there was artillery there. One, two, can't quite get them into there, but we do have some air. And then Kamel will join that. He only has to join in the combat phase. But that's next, and I don't think I've got any other movement, no. Okay, so that's all I can do. I wish I had more artillery here. Never mind, I have to do without. Um, so that's my movement. Now we go to the combat step. You saw it before. Do I need to do it again? No, I'll just show you the result. Oh, except... What I should have done is separate these, so I have to have them fighting that unit before these ones can get to there. So maybe I will show you sort of how the combat works again to also show how it sort of organises my thinking in the combat. So we've got a fight here and a fight here. Kamal's joining that one. And um, the Turks have got three air assets that can join that one. And they've got one that can join that one. That's all their spare air assets. I have to consider these fights are over months, so it gives time for the Greeks to rearrange their air assets. And so they're going to match. Uh, they, except they can have two in that fight. Ignore this really yet. So that gives the Greeks, they've got three unexpended air assets. Um... Okay, so let's do the smaller one first. 
So we've got 4 plus 2 is 6 versus, now we're in the rough. Now if, if, uh, if the French were attacking, they're fine. If the Greeks were attacking in the rough, they would take 30% uh, less of their combat factors. But anyway, it's defending on that side. So that's 4, 5, 6 versus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 versus 6. So this is the interesting question, you know, as opposed players, you say, hmm. Do I risk a 2d6? Chances are you're going to roll 7, aren't you? So you probably wouldn't be that daft. So they're each going to roll 1d6. And we got 2 on behalf of the um, Turks and 1 on behalf of the um, French. So the two, he flips and I will lose him completely. So he's he's worth one point. So he flips one and loss is another. That's fine for them because they go on French, they go on the um turn track and come back next turn. Now unfortunately there's only a one loss, but there's, I didn't bring in a regiment. I should have had an odd regiment that's hazard of upgrading your troops too quickly and not have enough regiments handy. So yeah, I'm going to have to expend four combat factors total to flip them. So that's the end of that combat. And these uh, units go in the used box. And now this other combat. So we got 10, 14 combat factors on the French side, but they're in a city, so they are... Oh no, sorry, the, the Greeks and the others suffer um, from bad terrain. The Turks don't, because this is their kind of terrain, what they're used to. Um, and home terrain as well. So, but anyway, they're on defence. So, um, against the city, they will, the attacker will take 30% reduction. If it was also, they had uh, the rough, they had that, then that would be a 60% reduction. But... Not in this case. So we have 14 plus 6 is 20 on the um, Greek side against 10, 13, minus 30. 13 minus 30 percent brings us down to 10 in the sort of rounding fashion. So that's 10. Plus 6 is 16, so we had 20 versus 16. So I'm going to have the um, French roll 4, and I'm going to have the. Um, no, just 3 for the um, Turks, and then Kemal will add it depending, and you can check. So, so we roll 4 for the. Uh, French. Oh dear. One, two, three, four, five. Four, four. Now, um, three for the Turks. Oh, that, it's stuck on a thing. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now, Kimmel has the option to roll again and either subtract or add it. Because the commander's there, so that's 12, and we were on 16, weren't we? So I think we'll leave it as it is. So 12 versus 5. So we're going to flip one of the core. Oh, yeah, and if a core flips twice, they actually leave a remnant, which is very handy. Non disrupted unit versus two combat factors. So that's 5 versus 12. So um, take. These two core will flip, and that four will have to flip as well. Okay, so that is great. So that was um, 14, as it were, because they had to flip more. Morale loss to the French. They start at 16, they're down to two. Yeah, it goes by the number of hits taken, not the exact die roll. So they had to take... 14 hits. Disastrous. Excellent. We've near the Turks are rejoicing. They've nearly knocked the French out back at home. There's French political situation turmoil. People are marching on the streets saying, Leave the 
Ottomans alone haven't realised they're Turks yet. <laughs> um, okay. So, and that's the situation. So, um, end of combat step. Kamal can go back to his central headquarters. And uh, we go to the recovery step. So, you notice it's the phasing player's recovery step. So, they won't get it this, at this point. So, they won't be able to sort of launch an attack effectively. They'll be at half effectiveness. I think they can't move. Um, on a one to four, these each are going to recover. It would be some modifiers depending, but not in this case. Okay, only one of them recovers, so there, that force is back to full. Oh, and I forgot we had the cavalry. I could have rolled again. We okay, but we didn't want to go over that. Sixteen twelve was a bit close. Okay, so there's two and two battle groups. They're still holding the city note. Now um, we go to the, oh, and there's the last thing, which is something I mentioned before that I said I'll just say later. At this point, um, the Turkish player can do a strategic retreat, and this is a nifty thing. So in their movement phase, um, not hearsay, but for example here, if they thought, oh, um, we're about to get blasted, they could move out and they take their control marker with them as they move out. Now that is important for the next step, which is the interface, because here we determine control for villiettes, and these make adjustments on our political support level. If you just lost a villiette that you controlled, you lose 1d6, but if you did that strategic retreat, or tactical retreat, st Turkish strategic retreat, you're not going to You'll let the enemy move in for nothing, but you won't lose that political. And that apparently reflects the original Kamal's original um, idea when he took command was retreat to the interior, you know, let them move in, loosen their supply lines, etc. And then when we've gathered our forces, we'll strike them, which is what they did. And I, and I, I did use it up here earlier in the game. Um, so... Uh, Control of Villiers. So the only ones that count for this are ones that have this symbol, which means it's Greek ethnic, as they say, um, the economic regions, and then the Italian and French kind of zones of supposed influence or want. Um, and that will affect, so that those ones are all the areas where we will affect political influence so and then what we have to do it first is is check for this so like for example this is contested um but first i'll do all the ones because if if it's ones you had before you get one point so the greeks get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten they immediately get ten on their political support um if they had just gained it this turn, they would get two, but they haven't gained any more this turn. So that's that. Then the Turks have um, some Greek ethnic areas. They have this economic place. One, two, three. Um, they have control in that French area. So that's four. And then that's Greek ethnic. Five. This is, I believe, Greek ethnic. No, that's Italian. Five, six. And that's Italian. Seven. So, oh, and 12 here, which the Italians ceded to the Turks at, on an event. So that was eight, was it? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we're on 35 to 30, Greek to Turkish. Um, and then we check for this one, which is... Uh, normally you would check for contestation, so you'd have, sort of have a dice off depending on how many battle groups were in the region. But in fact, in this case, as long as there's a French unit in a region, it is contested. So that remains contested. So it can't potentially go to Turkish control at the moment. Um, and that's it for the interface. It's set. The Turkish player now goes to the Turkish outrage table. Um, we check the number of Greek... Um, Villiers control, which I know is around 11 to 15, we roll, and depending on that roll, I rolled a 2, they get nothing, which could either be taken in um, aid, or, um, look at that, 
equipment points essentially or um, political points. So they could have got between one, two, three, and four if they'd rolled a six at zero, which they got there. So no Turkish outrage necessary this these couple of months. Um uh, and now the last thing we can do is um here we have these Turkish units are in the Armenian War where um that what's called a massacre, I don't want to go into that now. But um, there's a potential that either player can decide to escalate that and it will be resolved and then any units that survive the resolution come home. So um, that's another sort of sub-idea in this game which is full of um, bits and bobs like that to like really fill it juicy, bursting, full of historical flavour. And I've been leaving that each side at the moment. I should, in the next turn or two, I'm going to take a more careful look at that to see if it's going to benefit the Greeks, perhaps, to do it. Turks don't feel they need the forces yet because they've still got ones to buy. But it will definitely become a question later on because I think the game's often going to... I've played it once or twice, I think before, maybe three times before. And I think it tends like this. You start off with not many units and there's the beginning kerfuffles. Um, land is grabbed. Then it settles down to this where everyone's... Um, building on their political support and building up their units and then the Turks are going to have to make a big push at some point and drive the um, Greeks out either completely drive them off the board or drive their political sports support so far down which will happen by um, uh, it being reduced as the Turks take Viliets and uh, it not being replenished by perhaps um, you know, driving this support down and, and so forth, bringing their support to zero. So um, there's just the flavour. Oh, and the last thing is to bring the used air back to the ready boxes. So that's just an overall flavour um, of the game in play. To give you a little bit of an idea how the political aspects tie into the equipment assets aspects and more direct um, combat on the board. You don't get such an idea of, because we didn't have sort of vast gains, so you see one side losing quite a few um, political support points and the other side gaining um, quite uh, some. But uh, you can see that's going to get precious as the game goes on and political support ekes down, because it started up, it has been quite a bit higher before um, and uh, when your political support goes into this region it's harder for your units to recover so to flip them back so you can see you know you have kind of like a slight cascading effect so that's the end of this for now um, I hope that's been helpful we've almost reached an hour I think that's quite enough for this fun and games you didn't see the Italians move because like I said they only move by random events so they're the potentially they can move off the board um i don't remember seeing them much mo advancing forwards and contesting areas for control but i haven't read all of the um random events you've got lots um but at some point i probably will study that just to see what's played up or i did have this happen liberals game and, and but that was like more political change rather than military over and out.